first of all, good afternoon, uh, Mr. President of Comica, Victor Montagliani. And uh, great news today, or big news today, out of the office of CONCACAF, announcing the Gold Cup, uh, the procedures for the Gold Cup for next year. Um, coming up with an idea uh, as such, and also including a guest team as well, um, give us some background on how this, this all came about. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we, uh, this has sort of been the evolution of our Gold Cup um, from the moment I came in. I think we wanted to sort of have a bit of a, a football first mentality in everything we do. Our Nations League was uh, evidence of that. Uh, and our Gold Cup as well. We expanded it last version to 16 teams. Uh, this time we uh, actually expanded it again because we have 12 teams that are, were supposed to play in the playoff. And the pandemic sort of hit, and we weren't able to play those playoffs uh, home and away. But then we saw an opportunity to expand the Gold Cup even further to have a preliminary round, uh, which Bermuda is in. Uh, and so now they'll be part of the Gold Cup. So that's two Gold Cups in a row that they've qualified for. And, uh, you know, they'll see who they play, what the road to the group stage will be uh, on September the 28th. Uh, and so this expands the Gold Cup. Now we have 24 CONCACAF countries, 12 in the group stage, 12 in the preliminary. And then we also looked at, um, we've had a memo of understanding of the Asia Football Confederation, uh, where we exchange already uh, many things. Uh, we had refer their ref some of the referees refereeing the Gold Cup last year. We've had our referees refereeing their, their events as well. And we looked at it and we, we, we sat down with uh, their member of Qatar, the QFA and the uh, Qatar Supreme Committee, who are hosting the 22 World Cup. We are hosting the 26 World Cup in our region. So the synergies were there. And so um, we discussed a partnership, um, uh, not only football, but also, you know, one of the announcements today, which I think is, is for me very big news, is especially in light of where the world is today with respect to you know, uh, heightened heightened awareness, understanding, you know, uh, what how important education is, uh, diversity, all the issues that we're we're facing. We're seeing the remnants of this, but we need to hit it where it needs to be hit. Whereas educating people, having people with empathy and understanding, and the best way football can do that is through educating our young people uh, and giving them opportunities. And, and so this partnership between. Um, uh, the, between the QFA, the, their Supreme Committee, uh, through their amazing generation, which is the platform they have, and our next play gener uh, platform, is to me is one of the big parts of the announcement. And I'm very proud of that. And it will really help our young people uh, with this investment in the region. And then obviously on the football side, uh, Qatar, who's the Asian champion. So uh, obviously a very good side, the next host of the World Cup. They will be our guest uh, in, in, in our Gold Cup in 21 and in 23. And so that's all see exciting as well. Well, the fact that, that Bermuda has now qualified for their second consecutive Gold Cup is obviously big news for, for us. Um, having to play the preliminary matches also gives us that opportunity to play more football. And I think that's one of the mandates what you expressed when you came in as president to ensure that the smaller nations get that opportunity to to play more. If we're going to get better, we're going to have to play more. And this is not just another opportunity. Yeah, listen, I think, you know, I've always said that it's kind of hard to uh, grow when you're not, you know, practicing or playing or it doesn't matter what you're doing. If it's, you know, it could be playing a musical instrument or it could be playing football. Uh, and that's one of the problems we had in our region. Too many countries were playing, you know, uh, in a four year span, single digit matches. And, and it's also for, it's hard for a program to attract players, you know, like Bermuda, where, um, you know, it's kind of hard to go to a, a professional player who's on the fence of where he wants to play. Uh, he could play for Bermuda. He probably could play for somebody else, which is the reality of a lot of our countries. And say to him, you know, say, listen, we have a Nations League. We have a robust World Cup qualifying. We have an expanded Gold Cup. You're going to play matches here. You're going to have a real international career. I, I think it helps our member associations have those discussions with these players rather than saying, well, I don't really know what we're going to do because we have we don't really have a lot of games. So I think it's helped in the growth of our of our countries. And you know, if you see the opportunities that have now been given to everybody and the results that have happened, Bermuda is probably the best example of it. But there's others as well, like Suriname, uh, Montserrat. You know, uh, you know, players. All of a sudden, you start watching these games. You got 
where's that number nine from? Where's that number 10 from? So, you know, it, uh, it's the opportunity that was always the pillar that was missing in CONCACAF. And I think we've established it now um, quite strongly and firmly. Yeah. Looking at how, how the message would have been received by the, the CONCACAF nations, uh, obviously there's more excitement around now because it, it, national team football is coming to the forefront. So it allows leagues to actually get stronger because now there's more football. But looking at looking at around the region for us, um, do you see um, the football actually improving leaps and bounds over the course of your tenure so far as being president? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's only been four years, but I've already seen a tremendous amount of growth. And uh, the biggest evidence of that was in our Nations League. But also, you know, I see players now having opportunities to play in professional environments that perhaps they weren't playing in before. For instance, the new Canadian League, there's a new league in Canada called the Canadian Premier League. Um, you know, many of, the, many of the players in the Caribbean have actually gone up now to play to that league and, and making a living playing football. Uh, so the opportunities are there. I think our next, I think, evolution from a CONCACAF perspective and specifically from a Caribbean perspective is club football and trying to grow the club game and trying to have a, a more professional environment in the leagues within the Caribbean. And, um, you know, we've established a group to look into a Caribbean, Caribbean professional football, not necessarily just a Caribbean professional league, uh, because we know uh, the challenges with that, and especially with the travel in the area. But also, a, a, so what would professional football look like in the Caribbean? And so, you know, that sort of uh, group has been established. Unfortunately, the pandemic has uh, not allowed it to really meet as much as it has needs to and gather all the data. But that's something that also has to be done in a holistic way. For instance, uh, the Canadian League that I mentioned to you earlier, you know, I was sort of... A, that was sort of my little project when I became Federation president. Well, it took five, six years to get it off the ground. So these things don't happen overnight if you want to do them right and if you want it to be sustainable. So I think I think that's where we're at, uh, the next evolution. But the growth of just the last four years has been tremendous. Yeah. I know you're a busy man because everybody's probably not here to go down to, to get an interview with you uh, regarding sorry. this announcement today. <laughs> yeah, but, no, it's, um, been good. it's been very well received for sure. Yeah, what what is what is the what is the projected next four years for Concacaf? What does that look like in your in your mind? Well, I think uh, you know. Listen, we uh, obviously uh, you know we've done a good job on the national team front uh, in terms of the, the the sort of the assets we have. We want to increase our assets on the club side. Expanding our Champions League is our next uh, project, uh, which we want to start in earnest uh, to have more teams. Uh, and then also on the women's side, I think uh, you know we'll I think we'll have an announcement probably uh, in the next month or two about uh, the future of women's football and the comp especially on the competition side. Um, I know Bermuda has done very well in that category; they did really well at the U15s. But those generations need to be sustained um, so that you know you have a team to compete to qualify for a World Cup one day. And so I think those are some of the things that we're looking at over the next four years. Uh, that I think where we have to really have a look and invest in. Yeah, and obviously for the last thing, uh, the the dates for the World Cup have been announced. Um, countries right now are, are still struggling a little bit with the, yeah. the pandemic and restrictions of going to. What what's the latest around the Concacaf region for these matches to take place in these these early FIFA windows? Yeah, so we actually had a chat today with uh, my president, and actually I have a meeting with FIFA later on this week. And we'll probably have a, a, an announcement from FIFA and CONCACAF jointly, either later this week or early next week, um, about the October and November windows. Because October, I think, will be very difficult to play these games uh, just because of the reality of uh, travel in our region. Uh, and I even think November might be a, a little bit of a problem. So we will have some confirmation within a week on this. And that means that countries like Bermuda, who were scheduled to play in October, likely won't start in October may start in November, but in all likelihood will probably commence in March of next year. And I think we want to make that announcement sooner so that they have then have a, a longer runway to prepare, uh, you know, for protocols and all the other things that they have to prepare for. All right. Well, Mr. President, I want to thank you for your time. Look forward you, to the Ryan. announcement next week. Uh, it's always a pleasure chatting with you, uh, getting the latest updates from Coca-Cola. 
And uh, we wish you well, wish you all the best in health and, and as well as your committee and look forward to any announcements that come out of the, the CONCACAF office that sheds light on the football in this region. Thanks, Earl. Uh, listen, Thank you. you got a Bermuda shirt on. You need to talk to Mark and get yourself that new pink jersey, man. Tell him, uh, tell him, tell him that I, I'm still waiting for mine, too. I love that jersey. It's one of, it's one of the better ones in the region. Right after so. this. I will call him right after this. <laughs> Thanks, Earl. Take care, man. All the okay, best. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, have a good night. Bye-bye.